by Jerry Lane Chevrolet. Starring legend Skip Bertman and Dan Canavan. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here is now the host of the Hold the Rope Show, Tommy Chrysan. Take it away, TJ. Hello and welcome to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. I am Tommy Chrysan, ready to have some fun for the next couple of hours. The fifth season of Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. And got some changes. We're kicking it up in the world. We're here on YouTube, on the Colada Show, soon to be the Hold the Rope Show YouTube channel. And we really want to start off by thanking Jordy Colada and FM Digital Media, Lloyd, Jack, all the people who are here we've worked with for many weeks to get ready for this show. We couldn't have done it without them. We're very happy to be here. We're excited. We've created a little buzz around town. That's a good thing. And it's, uh, we're going to have a fun show for you tonight. We're going to have Skip. We're going to have Cano. We're going to have a lot of stories and fun. It's going to be a nice night. And then with a couple of guests tonight, we're going to have Taylor Jacobs, assistant LSU AD in charge of NIL and strategic initiatives. And then our good buddy, the Jumbo, Ronnie Rents. He'll come in and join us. We'll probably get him to do a Skip Bertman imitation yeah, at sure some we point. Can do that. I don't think we have to twist his arm. He loves to do that. So, guys, I want to say hello. Dan Canterbury, how are you doing? TK, doing great. Uh, really excited about being on YouTube and, of course, being here with Jordy and uh, Lloyd Courtney, doing a great job as a producer. We're excited to have, uh, have the opportunity to try something new and try to step it up, as you say, yeah. a little bit and a little more relaxed well, but, atmosphere. Well, we want to have a good time. I mean, we're not. The media people, we're coaches, and we're going to give you coaching information and how it really happened, uh, even if it's baseball, even if it isn't baseball. I've spoken to the other coaches, and I'll get the information. But we're not looking to break some story that's going to say something bad about any of the sporting coaches. We're not. We're not that. We're we're coach. We want to have fun with you. Want to have. You to find out how we uh, won national championship, use my information as the athletic director, uh, and show you how we got to every coach. Tommy, great uh, intro there. Uh, I like that we're going to NIL, Dan. Yeah, Boy, that's right. Wild West. But what we, is NIL? <laughs> well, we're going to have some fun. Uh, like we said, we've got Taylor Jacobs, new LSU assistant AD, AD in here tonight. Ronnie Rents. want to throw this out. Next week, in studio, baseball coach Jay Johnson and Mike Scarborough of TigerBait.com. He's been out at LSU football practice. He's got a pulse on all the recruiting, short-term, long-term. They'll be our guests next week. Before we go to break, we want you to subscribe to all of our social media stuff. You hold the rope, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hold the rope. We can get that up on the screen for you. We want you to subscribe now. Tonight we're on the Collada, Jordy Collada Show YouTube right. channel to launch this thing, just like Mikey Mock took did with his show, Mic'd Up, here at these studios, Rohan Davey. So social media, we want YouTube channel, which is Hold the Rope Show, and then Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We want you to hit all of that stuff up for us. And we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with the business of sports. And, of course, Coach Bertman will handle that. All right, uh, as we head to break, I'll tell you about Fat Tuesdays Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop, Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Come to Fat Tuesdays Casino, where every day is a carnival. Fat Tuesdays Casino in Plaquemine. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Guidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Dago, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help you with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201 201- Nine three zero zero. That's two zero one nine three zero zero. Don't have time for a cold, a cut, those allergies, or a sprain. I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. 
Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Sammy's Famous Cheese Sticks are the bomb. Sammy's better than ever. In a world where a vehicle needs maintenance and repair, it takes a special set of skills and specific tools to get the job done. If you visit one dealership this year, visit Jerry Lane Chevrolet, because there you'll find the technician. Oh, the rope with Skip and Cano. Time for the business of sports, brought to you by the good folks at Dependable Storage. The Bloomberg AD. What's the Bloomberg AD hat? We got to know. <laughs> well, you know, Barry Bloomberg, a good friend of uh, Skip and of mine for years and years. And, of course, Barry uh, is sponsoring the hat rack. Skip wears many, many hats. One is a comedian, but he doesn't have a hat for that. But uh, being the AD and, of course, being the baseball coach, he switches hats. So when we go to the business of sports, he goes into his AD tie. And then Skip, put the AD tie on. We're going to talk a little bit about NIL, but we've got a special guest coming up that's going to an expert on NIL, NIL. But Skip, LSU right now is really at the forefront. We've heard it a few times, heard it at the presser yesterday. We're at the forefront of NIL. Kudos to Taylor Jacobs, who's going to come on. We'll talk to him about that. And also Scott Woodward for not rushing into NIL by building a good model. Talk about that, Skip. Uh, originally, the state of Louisiana. Uh, laws prevented us from doing what we needed to do in the NIL and be out front. Quickly, the, they changed the law. We, on the other hand, waited, as Dan said, and now, of course, we're doing everything right. I don't believe other schools are ahead of us in the NIL name, image, and likeness. Actually, there are very few rules. <laughs> Very few rules. This year. And they may do something in the future. Uh, so quarterbacks make more money than second team left tackle, and it doesn't bother anybody. A lot of the stuff that they do in NIL, the coach doesn't even know about it. You know, it happens out with the father and an agent, and they follow the rules of N you know LSU which you can't use a lot of L. You can't show that you're LSU in a uniform unless you pay a licensing fee. Uh, but NIL is wild, wild west. I don't know what they're doing at other schools, uh, but we're doing well with it, and I can't speak specifically on but a few people whose names I don't even want to mention. So uh, that's it, Tommy, we're leave that on to, NIL. We're going to leave that to Taylor, but one yeah. of the things the folks need to know is anybody that does an NIL deal has to go through LSU and Taylor Jacobs and her people. They have to go through an educational format. They have to have contracts in place. They're allowed to have an agent, and Taylor can talk more about that. So it's all run through the uh, compliance and NIL department at LSU, and also there's a partnership that's been developed with Altheus uh, Group, who basically matches up the people and, and really oversees it, much like Sports Properties does with the, uh, you know, with the corporate sponsorship. So LSU's got a good structure in place. We're looking forward to it. It's not allowed to be involved in the recruiting process. That's for sure. Got a couple of people commenting on the Colada Show YouTube page. We appreciate that. Hey, let's talk about the com the Big Ten, the huge media deal. One point two billion Whoa. billion with a B as in book. See, I'm we setting that up for later, coach. <laughs> billion dollars media. And they're talking about paying student athletes out of this. I mean, it, this thing is no. crazy. <laughs> well, I don't know if they can pay student athletes. No, out I don't of think it. they can do that. But uh, what what the, makes it so 
uh, up in the news, it's the highest ever. Like the SEC doesn't make that. Right. But that 7-2 doesn't include the SEC channel which, of course, is so much better than the Big Ten or anyone else. And it doesn't include distance and what's going to happen in the future. Dan, what do you think is going to happen Well, with if this? you break it down with the uh, Big Ten deal, they start in 2023. So if you break it down, they're going to get about $1.2 billion a year for the conference. Now, they may have more people in it. <laughs> you know, Their slice for each school may be less than you expect, or maybe equal to the SEC slice, depending on the number of teams. It's number one. The SEC, with the contract we're getting in 2024, is about $710 million a year for the SEC. But, as Skip said, it doesn't include what we get in the SEC for the actual ESPN SEC channel, which the Big Ten won't have the Big Ten network with the SEC like, I mean, with ESPN like they but did. But the future counts. And, and the We're going to have Texas and Oklahoma when they're going to renegotiate. renegotiate that deal. And boy, we'll be $8, eight billion. We'll be closing the gap. Maybe more. So it's going to be <laughs> 1.2 for the Big Ten, but we'll close the gap in the SEC to get about nine, maybe nine fifty, maybe more. So it's going to be about equal come twenty twenty four. Yeah, and, and I have a question for Coach. I mean, this conference, you know, Oklahoma and Texas are coming to the SEC. UCLA, Southern Cal, planning to go to the Big Ten. Sure. Where is that going to stop, or is it is money going to dictate that? Well, money's going to dictate it like it does everything else. But I think uh, L, you know, our conference, you know, LSU and the SEC was first. Remember when I started, there were 10 teams. And they went to 12. And then they went to 14. Once, and other conferences followed. And then we went to 16. And of course, what you have here is television rights. I think there'll be different scheduling that we have now, of course. So it's a great thing for the fans. And it's a great thing for LSU. The one thing, Tommy, with this, like Skip mentioned, with the TV, Big Ten versus SEC, we've got better games. We've got better matchups mm -hmm. in the SEC than the Big Ten's going to have. I think that's going to make a major play in the renegotiation that takes place before the 2024 season. So I, I think you're going to see a lot there. There was some funny stuff on social media. Can you imagine the, the CBS announcers doing the Iowa State-Michigan State game when – Florida's playing Georgia, yeah. or LSU's playing Ole Miss, or Alabama's playing Tennessee. You know, they're going to be like, yeah. what, what are we doing here? But follow the money. That's why where we're at now and where we're going to be. Well, we're, we're always going to be. The SEC, uh, Southeastern Conference has been, they got more championships, uh, national championships, way more than any other conference. Uh, they have more of this and more of that. Uh, not just LSU, of course, you know, but all the other teams have done so well. And when Texas, Oklahoma come, it'll be even better. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be big. It's, it's going to put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a fun yeah. ride going oh, boy, forward, no doubt about that. There'll be a lot of changes as we move forward. You know, it's going to evolve into what it, it's going to be. And I'm, I'm excited because – Skip, don't you think, one question I want to ask Skip, Tommy, is don't you think with all these changes in the TV contracts, eventually the power of five schools um, or the, well, or should we say, the major yeah. conference schools are going to branch off from the NC2A, much like football, Listen, for all sports? Uh, folks, there's no doubt about that uh, this is going to happen. Uh, at some time, you know, the power five, you know, all the conferences – that you mentioned when you started, and of course the Big Ten and other, uh, all of them, the five, which represent maybe 70 teams by the time this happens, uh, they're going to leave the NC2A and they're going to run their own. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Because when you vote on stuff now, there are literally over 1,000 NCAA schools. 
Division II, Division III, and smaller schools in Division I. No, they don't want to give extra scholarships. No, they don't want to pay more for this. So no we're, coaches. They're they don't want extra voted. coaches in. Yeah, all the time. But that's why they'll leave at some time. There's no question that'll happen. And uh, then they'll run their own. They'll still have to do gender equity because that's a national uh, law. They'll still be, but they could be fair and more equitable. For example, uh, baseball, 11.7 scholarships is too small for 35 players and three coaches. I mean, other sports have more than that for less players and have more coaches. You know, they have to, they can work that out, see, at the, when they go on their own. You know, you, I think you see that for sure. Plus, there's enough money in the contracts to facilitate that with these super conferences. And, and one thing I want to oh, say sure. to, to all of the fans, I don't care what school you're a fan of or what conference, you know, in 1964, Bob Dylan wrote a song called The Times They Are A-Changing. <laughs> well, they're still changing. And most people don't like change. But I'm not wild about Jimbo Fisher, but he made some astute comments at SEC Media Days when he said – College football was built on rivalries. Auburn, Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Texas, Texas A&M, Texas, Oklahoma. We can go around, Army, Navy. We can go around the country. And people got used to that. That's what brought people to the sport, the rivalries. Cheer for your team. Wear the shirt. Wear the hat. A lot of those rivalries have already went by the wayside, and more are going to because of conference realignment. So fans just know that there are a lot of changes coming in sports, especially for some of us that have been around a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that was a good point, uh, TK. There's no doubt that the changes will come, but like Dan pointed out, and like I mentioned, I think that in years to come, you'll see not the NCAA, but the five conferences running their own league. And of course, the comp what makes them pay more money to the SEC is every week we have these super games. Uh, naturally, the Big Ten has some super games, but not as many as we do, and that'll take a charge for, uh, real soon. Last thing here in the business of sports, I mentioned the $1.2 billion contract for the Big Ten. A billion as in B. B as in book. We got to talk about this brand new book. That's over here to Coach Bertman's right. And uh, everything matters in baseball. And, Coach, I'll start off by asking. You see, right, the coach is right there. We go get the logo up there. Oh, there, there it go. is. Everything matters in baseball, the Skip Bertman story. Well, my question for you, then Dan will chime in. How did it come to be? I think that's a perfect title, all I know about you and, and all I know about LSU baseball before you were there and since. Why did you get to that title? I think it's perfect. Everything matters in baseball. Because when you got here, the coffee had to be hot. The hot dog had to be good. Right, we changed. The first request I had was to put uh, diaper changing stations uh, into the bathroom. And, of course, you got to have mama come to the game. Babies have to come. And uh, they couldn't believe it. Yeah, we had a list of 60 things that had to be done like shower heads, switches for lights. That it was awful. Uh, I must say the kids did a lot of painting. <laughs> uh, the kids t took ownership, and they did an awful lot of stuff. When I spoke to that first team, Dan, I remember saying to them, guys, I remember, we're back in 1983. Come back with me. And I remember, <laughs> I remember saying to them, Guys, we're going to Omaha. You know, nobody ever been to Omaha. We're going to Omaha. That's where the College World Series is. And they started to cheer and laugh. And I thought to myself, ooh, maybe they're into it until I heard a kid say, ooh, coaches on drugs like us. <laughs> oh, they never believed that they can go there. Fast forward, you know, to later on today when you talk to him or Jay Johnson, it's always about going to Omaha. And you got to do more to get that because there's so many more teams. Uh, but over the years, remember, Dan, I told him uh, as they were growing, I says, guys, you have to stop calling coaches about 
where to go, what to do, and how to register. I says, every year there's a girl from Ames, Iowa, and other places like that. They don't know anybody here. They get registered, they move in their dorms, and they go to college for four years. Don't call me. Don't call the coaches. Get it done. And uh, that was fun, too. Skip, have you gotten any early feedback on the book? Yes. Uh, they've sold over 1,000 books in three weeks. And uh, Dan Canterbury's been very helpful. And, of course, LSU's been very helpful. Uh, we have other means of social media, email blasts and getting out there. And we have more, so the book will continue on. It will improve at Christmas. It'll improve during the baseball season. And, of course, nobody has a limit to one year on the book. It can go more than one year. But I'm very happy with it. It's a good book. I enjoyed writing it. it took a long time. By the way, TK, for you folks out there, if you want to get the book, you can order it at AcadianHouse.com slash sports. I did that last night. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's right. You said you did that last night. I think you got the I was the number 1,000th book. book. What do I get for that, Coach? <laughs> do I get anything like a T-shirt? Well, you get to be the head of the TV show. <laughs> I, don't, right I don't get like a TV show that says, I bought the 1,000th book. <laughs> you get a bottle of water, Tommy. Okay. Oh, I got one. Yeah, so we right. get, we're even, Coach. We're even. All no, right. but hey, we're going to tell you all, follow along about how to get the book. Everything Matters in Baseball, AcadianHouse.com slash sports, and we'll let you know how to get a, get a hold of any of us. All right, we got to move towards a break, Coach. You can has got a live read. I got one, and then we'll come back with some LSU baseball talk, a few other LSU sports things, and maybe the skip story of the week. We got, we're going to have lots of stories for people, all right? You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. Hey, for all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. They can get you enrolled in Medicare, check out your Medicare plan, and make sure it's right where you need it to be. Office is located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated. Great customer service. Connect on Facebook or Instagram or call 225-620-6990. The Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. He was looking for the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me, looking to buy a car? Until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. A burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too. Sammy's better than ever. If you're in a, an accident, a car accident, a slip and fall where you're injured, you need to call an attorney. The defendant insurance company, it's their goal to close the case as quickly as possible and pay out the least amount of money as possible. That's why it's important to call an attorney and uh, call the law offices of O.C. Brown. At the law office of O.C. Brown, we're a family-owned firm. We want to be your law firm for a lifetime. Can you truly love something unconditionally? It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. Sammy's better than ever.
we continue with the Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Appreciate all the people jumping in on YouTube. Carl Dunn, Carl the Cat, Kenneth, Jimmy, Michael. We're going to get to all you guys as we go <laughs> forward. The, the first show, Season 5, Episode 1, to the YouTube world on the Collada Show channel tonight. Hold the Rope channel starting next week and every week after that. It'll be on Tuesday nights and might make a little shift during baseball season, but that's not for us to talk about right now. But we do want to talk some baseball. The Blumberg AD hat rack, Skip Bertman, you two guys were on hand yesterday for the Jay Johnson press conference to talk a little LSU baseball. Well, Skip, you got to put on your uh, your baseball hat. My Blumberg baseball your hat. Your Blumberg yeah. baseball hat and turn back into a baseball coach. Get All out right, of your AD I'll tell you mode. What. And go to the 18 years rather than the seven. <laughs> You're right. I enjoyed very much uh, the press conference. I must say that uh, Jay Johnson does a great job. He can speak. He has no off switch. The guy has no uh, children at this time. And his wife and he, his wife's were very wonderful and uh, helps him a lot. Uh, he's a great recruiter. He's a great practice coach. Uh, he has, I believe, uh, great assistance, uh, stronger than last year. I'm sorry. I think they're stronger than last year. Uh, I think the, the guy has transfers. Dan, do you know uh, the transfers? Well, we got five transfers in. Tommy, I think you know all five, don't you? Well, we've we, got. To, I know we've got Tommy White, the first baseman, DH. From NC the, State. Well, yeah. You know, he came in. We've got the kid Hurd, a pitcher from UCLA. Little from UCL from uh, Vanderbilt. Little from Vanderbilt. And then you got the Skeens kid who was a pitcher catcher at Air Force, but Monday he said he's going to go pitcher only. Right now the plan is pitcher only. No, but he's going right, to DH. But, well, I wanna, but not I catch. Make, I should have said not catch. Before you keep going, <laughs> I'm going to mention. Uh, Jay wanted to make sure he had some short stops. Not the set for J uh, Jordan Thompson who played last year, but we got to replace it third and second. And he wanted to make sure, so he recruited three. <laughs> and he lost three in the draft. I mean, he did a great job. Then he gets a fourth guy that bats left-handed and from v VCU, and he's got a uh, – Jay does that. Uh, he got an offensive production that was really outstanding. <laughs> and uh, the point I'm making is I'll speak to – we have Jay next week. Uh, Skip Bertman and Dan Canterbury, who coached with me for so long, we like Jay. I mean, really, he's a good coach. Yeah. Tommy, one of the things I, I want to say I took out from the uh, press conference, I thought Josh Jordan, uh, the, he's going to do the catching on the field, he's going to coach third base, going to do the first baseman, and he's the head recruiter. You know, he he said a lot of great things, and of course – he and Wes Johnson don't have an off switch either, you can tell. No. They're all in the same mode, yeah, Jay and the right. two coaches. That's impressive. But what he said that I really liked, he said, I got to tell you, he goes, I, I, I watched Jay recruit when he was at Arizona and at Nevada, and I studied him, and I liked the, and I could see he was working. So I tried to be where he was and learn how to recruit by watching him. I think that's a good point. But what he said was, I actually enjoy the recruiting process. Like, I like to talk to – I like meeting the parents. I like meeting the kids. He goes, I like meeting the, the youth good. league coaches, the high school coach, the travel ball coach, the junior college coach, and I like going around. He enjoys the process. He said, I'm a people person. I like that. I think that's key to the recruiting because – and the other thing he said is, we have a head coach that's actively, unbelievably involved in the recruiting process. I think that the combination of those two guys They're gonna is do really well. big. They did well this year. They're going to do well. Yeah, it's, it's you know they, they've got the LSU brand to work with. That helps. They, they do. Remember, Josh came from Duke. Now Duke won an ACC championship, and who? My God, who ever heard of Duke baseball? <laughs> right. and before that, he was at Appalachian State, so and he's then been he at was at levels. Appalachian State. <clears throat> who ever heard of those? But they were in regionals. And now, of course, he's upgrading to the LSU brand. 
Yeah, so he's got a fall roster. Not all of those guys will be there in the spring. There's going to be a lot of fall wow. practices. Public usually can go to the fall practices out at the box. Alec Box Stadium, skip Bertman Field. There you go. See, I had to get that in there for well, you. One coach. of the things with the, so the folks ought to know, he's got 44 guys on the fall roster right now. As of right now, they can keep 39 is the limit, but they're trying to push to 40. Right, right. Skip. right. All right, so we'll, we'll see if that ends up materializing a little bit. Uh, now, we got to get to the skip story of the week brought to you by Benny's Car Wash. And, you know, we'll kind of roll into this, Coach. Uh, what you got for I mean, people, I do. I when do. we I, did radio all let, last let's year. Let's tell you, let's use the TV and let me show you what I did in motivation on just the stories. All right, and then I'll – Tell you maybe in another week about the videos, and we'll do the Sunday speaker series, and we'll find out how you can build a team from you know very limited, almost no resources, to the best in the country, certainly in the 1990s, but they're still great today. Uh, stories. I right, listen to this. Every game. <clears throat> 70 different games, there was a story told just before the game in right field if we were in the first base dugout, left field if we were in the third base dugout. I, I took the kids and I told, uh, you know, two to three minute story. The story generally had something to do with the recruitment uh, and the ability of the uh, of that week, you know, of what we did in the morning, of what we did at night. Uh, in this case, I'm going to tell you one story that probably was used uh, on a game during a week against a weak opponent <laughs> uh, from uh, probably in state or maybe out of state. Now, here's how it works. The kids go, they finish batting practice, they finish infield. This is a definitely a teaching moment. They all get together in right field when you're the first base dog out of the box. All right, I wait for them to gather around. There's nobody behind me. Everybody has to see me, and I have to be able to make eye contact with every single kid. Here's a, here's a real story that was told uh, just once. In one year, maybe they heard it twice if they were there two years and so on. Only told a story once a year. Here's an example of a story that was told with a weak opponent and they we got to get up. Ready? All right, guys. Lou Little was a great coach in the 1930s. I mean, at Columbia University, he was a Hall of Famer. He had a player by the name of John who didn't play that often. You know, only played as a reserve. And uh, he knew John well, and he knew John's father. He saw John walking with his father to the cafeteria. He saw him go into the chapel to pray. He saw them often. One day, Lou Little was asked to tell John, that his father died. No, it's a tough thing for a coach. He calls John in. Of course, he gives him the information. John handles it well, and he says, Coach, I have to go home. And of course, the coach says, of course. Lou Little didn't expect him back. But the very next week, he comes back, and Lou Little uh, is sought out by John. And John says, oh, my God, how's your family? He said, very good. Is there anything I can do? Oh, when you say that to a kid, you got to do it. And he says, yes, coach, I want to start in the homecoming game this week against Georgetown. He says, well, yes, but I may take you out after a couple plays. Fast forward to the actual game. John's at linebacker. Remember, they played both ways in those days. So he's going to play linebacker on defense. First play, he gets him for a two-yard loss. Second play, he's in on the tackle, but the third play, he tackles him himself. And, of course, the coach is, says, wow, I've never seen that. 
So he leaves them in. They punt the ball. Now he's a guard and his blocks, and he drives them up and down the field. And, of course, uh, Columbia wins. The game ball goes to John. And everybody is cheering. And Lou Little sees John in the corner by himself. And he walks over to me and says, John, you were so great tonight. And your father passed away. How did you do it? He says, Coach, you've seen my father and I so often. But what you didn't know was my father was blind. Today, I believe it was the first day that my father saw me play. Today, I played for my daddy. Boys, play this game for somebody in your family. Somebody new tonight that's never seen you play. Play like champions. You represent LSU. You represent your family. You represent your maker. Have fun. And they break out. And uh, that's one story. Wow. Some are shorter. Uh, some are longer. They have to do with what's happening during the game. But, uh, yeah, I want to tell you about stories next week. I want to tell you about videos. And, of course, that's brought to you by Benny's Car Wash with that story. That's that's powerful stuff, Coach. Powerful story. That's that's amazing. That's uh, really cool. Yeah, great stuff. All right, we're going to move towards a break here, and we're going to come back, and uh, we got some guests lined up. They should be here any minute. We'll wing it till they get here if we got to. But uh, anyway, Coach, uh, go ahead and walk us into the next break. Are you a business owner? Could you use up to 26000 back per employee? The Employee Retention Credit Program allows business owners to request a credit on payroll wages that they paid in 2020 and 2021. GoTax Resolution has been helping clients apply for funds for over a year with former IRS agents reviewing the documents and building an audit trail. You are sure to maximize the credit opportunities. Best yet is this company will evaluate your entire account at no charge and when they have qualified you and done all the work, they will give you a total on a fee basis. Call GoTax Resolution today and see if you qualify. That's 985-722-1040. I also want to tell you about Advanced Windshield. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in their two-technician system where they can ensure a proper seal every time. They'll not compromise or cut their cost with one technician in the truck. They don't want to compromise that quality. This also helps provide quicker services than our competitors. We're dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788, advancedwindshield.com. Accident, a car accident, a slip and fall, where you're injured, you need to call an attorney. The defendant insurance company, it's their goal to close the case as quickly as possible and pay out the least amount of money as possible. That's why it's important to call an attorney and uh, call the law office of O.C. Brown. At the law office of O.C. Brown, we're a family-owned firm. We want to be your law firm for a lifetime. In a world where a vehicle needs maintenance and repair, it takes a special set of skills and specific tools to get the job done. If you visit one dealership this year, visit Jerry Lane Chevrolet, because there you'll find the technician. Don't have time for a cold, a cut, those allergies, or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Blake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Sometimes simple is better. Like Sammy's signature white beans and catfish. Comfort food at its best and simply delicious. Sammy's better than ever. 
Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. We continue with Hold the Rope, Skip and Cano. Appreciate all you folks jumping in on YouTube. Uh, we got Ferguson, got Carl, Jared, Mitchell, Michael. Appreciate all you guys as we roll to our next segment, which is brought to you by Citizens Bank. Talk Time to talk some LSU sports. And I guess you got to start with LSU football. Yeah. I mean, less than two weeks, they're in the Superdome in New Orleans playing Florida State. All right. I, I just met the head coach once, okay? I met two football assistants. Uh, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I'm really in on this, but I'll tell you what. Coach Kelly showed me something in an interview uh, that I think is winning, a winning coach. Uh, he said, because of so many transfers, of course, that he has, uh, he said, you know, this is new to me because I've got so many new players, this has not happened before. See, a lot of coaches would have covered that up. Very proud of uh, Coach for doing that. Now for the actual team and the quarterback race. Yeah, you got to talk about the quarterback. Naturally, you got to do that. Naturally, there can't be one quarterback. There's got to be two. i tell you what, though. Uh, we had a great opportunity on Saturday before the skies opened up in that uh, – you know, I worked for Tiger Athletic Foundation, and we had a, a function for some of our donors, and they had the players' families there. They had a closed scrimmage, but it was open to some folks. And the opportunity, they practiced in the beginning, and then they ran some plays. Uh, the quarterbacks, all three quarterbacks got in. Uh, running with the first team on that particular day was Nussmeyer, and uh, he did a good job. And then Daniels ran, ran with the two-on-twos, and then uh, Walker Howard got in and ran with both clubs. I'd say it was very, very organized. The practice part in the beginning, I thought was very, very impressive. Meaning that Brian Kelly had these guys moving. There was no wasted time. There wasn't anybody not knowing where they were going, looking at it like a coach. They were getting to work. <laughs> they were after it. And uh, I thought that was quite impressive. I think the folks were impressed. Uh, the players looked sharp. I think we're in good shape. I think the quarterback, could be a situation, and this is just well, me. He, he, he's likely to use both quarters. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, people always say, well, who's the quarterback? The first question. And uh, the truth is, we don't have to know, Dan. There are different styles, too, yeah. as well. Like one run, uh, the, you know, one, I don't think there's any secret here, one runs better than the other, and Nussmeyer has a bullet, powerful arm. Right, He's he's got a fastball. <laughs> He's got the fastball working. Okay. Uh, I don't want to make a decision, cause I, but we were there. We saw a prize. He's terrific. I think the coaches are good. I don't think you can run the season on the Florida State game. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that's it. I think, you, will the team do this? Get, yeah. us get better. And I can't do this on the radio. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't will give the, the team hand get better? And uh, let's see. Let's wait. Let's not make any kind of super judgments about uh, Coach Kelly or any of the players, uh, even in the first game. I will say, they just looked excited, enthused, and they're ready to go. I think it's going to be a nice season. They've got some talent on the field. Let's face it, this is a long way from 34 in the bowl game. Brian Kelly's a Hall of Fame coach. Let's get that out there right now. Uh, he don't worry about it. He's going to do whatever it takes to get us where we want to be, which, of course, is at the very top. You know, the expectations at LSU are so unrealistic, you know, for the teams. And uh, But he'll, he'll do it. I like him. Well, first thing, no t in the last 20 years of college football, other than Alabama, 
That's no team right. has more national championships than LSU. Uh, that's right. Okay. And here's what the fans need to know. There's a lot of unknown things about this football team. New coaches, new coaching staff, a lot of transfers, a lot of new guys. You're going you're gonna to have to have a roster when you go to the game or you watch on TV. <laughs> but those questions are going to get answered as time goes forward. Brian Kelly has won everywhere he's been, from Central Michigan to Cincinnati to Notre Dame. Grand hey, Valley I got to throw it, Grand Valley State. I got to throw this in. He won over 40 games with Ian Book at quarterback at yeah, Notre that's Dame. That's right. Now, if you watch Book for the Saints, you can – I'll stop right there. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I think the fans oh. need to know that this team with a lot of things we don't know. That's right. A lot of things the fans don't know. Those questions will get answered as you go forward. You're in the SEC – Getting big games. You got a couple non-conference games. I mean, we're, we're going to find out. But I think you defer to Brian Kelly, as Coach said. He's a Hall of Fame yeah. coach. He knows what to do, when to do it, and about the quarterback. He's going to put the best 11 guys yeah, on I the mean, field that he thinks is going to give the team a chance to win. He's right. not going to put a guy out there like, no, no, he's not as good, but I want to put it. No, he's going to put the <laughs> best 11 on the field. Of course he is. And he's going to figure it out. And he's going to change it as it evolves. Like he's Coach going said, to learn the things. key, the key, especially with a new coach, really a brand new team, That's a lot right. of unknowns. He's going to start out with what he thinks is best. And like Coach said, if they get better as they go along, which they will, uh, gotta, he's doing the job. Got to find and, out if uh, which transfers, which, how good they play, are they teachable, coachable, will they improve, uh, how they doing in, in all facets of the uh, practice. How do they handle 100,000 at yeah, Tiger Stadium? that's right. That's, that's right. big. Yeah, well, we're going to find out. Southern Jaguars are the first home game. So, you know. We'll, well, we'll, well, but, you know, I'm uh, being an AD, I'm not just about football, although football is 80% of the income at LSU. If you're uh, one, we have 21 sports at LSU. If you're the coach of the other 20 sports, root for the football team. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where the income is. All right. Uh, that said, let's go to volleyball. Well, volleyball started out practice, and they're they're moving now, getting some scrimmages in. Uh, everybody's getting off the ground. The soccer team went out and uh, played at the pitch. Everybody knows about the pitch since Ted Lasso. Yeah. And uh, you know, great show by the way. Great show. <laughs> Skip one of your favorites, Ted Lasso. Yes, Ted Lasso. One Ted of my Lasso. Best. But uh, anyway, soccer won five nothing uh, last. Last uh, Friday against, against the uh, Stephen F. Austin. Austin. So, Coach Sean Hudson out to a good start. Look forward to that. Bring your kids out there. It was on SEC Network. The game was televised as well. So, a good start for them. But every sport now is bringing their teams in. And they're meeting with them. And, uh, Coach, I want to ask you this. I was there for all of those, as many of those. Not all of them. But when the team comes in the beginning of the year, how big is that for the head coach to meet with all the people you recruited and the guys coming back and, huh? and girls coming back and what kind of shape they hey, look hey, like they're in, the improvements, the growth, and all the things, and yeah. get them all in a room and talk to them? I think, every, I think like Jay Johnson was excited for this year. After you've recruited and picked up new kids, it's very exciting to talk to the new team. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, th you know, this is a coaching information when you talk to the first team on that first day, like Nick Saban is talking to his football team, he's got the same speech that he had last year and for the last 15 years, you know, with a little bit of changes as time goes on. All right, I did that in baseball. Uh, but what you're really looking for is do they have eye contact? Are you making sure that every kid is looking at you? And, boy, it makes you so happy if that's the case because naturally you're giving them a lot of good information, and yet you don't know everything about who's going to play on that day, and you got to make sure they all feel that they can play on that day. Tommy, one of the things that happens, and, Coach, you know this, of course, when all the kids come in, there's so much to be done before you even get to get on the field. You've yeah. got to get physicals in. You've got to go through compliance. You've got to get them in the apartments. they got to meet with the academic council. they got to go through orientation. Uh, one of the things that we did, and I think all the sports basically do, tell them about how important it is to have a buddy system or a mentor, uh, former players, returning players, with the new players. Yeah, that's a good point, Dan, of course. Uh, when you... The new players are there. 
you're counting upon upperclassmen to help the new players and finding wherever they got to go, going to the physicals and so on. Now, they make friends very quickly. Now, a good point is Jay Johnson had, I saw them when I went to the batting cages. I met a lot of the players coming in. Uh, Jay Johnson had them in summer school. See, that, that's a key. Like uh, Brian Kelly, you know, had them in summer school. As many as you can get into summer school before the actual fall semester, that's a big bonus. And, boy, the, they are buddies by the time the season begins, those guys in summer school. And then they look up, of course, to the older guys. Yeah, they know where all the classroom buildings are. They know where yes. to go eat. You know, they where to know where the student union is. They got everything down. That's really good. Hey, as we go forward on Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano, we're always going to talk all the LSU sports. We've had many yes. coaches from right. all the sports, men's, women's, doesn't matter. We've had a long list of them on this show over the years, and we're going to continue to do that. Certainly football is a big topic now. In fact, next week we've got Mike Scarborough of TigerBait.com. He's been at practice every day. He'll have a lot of great <laughs> info for you uh, next good. week. He'll so, do well. All right, we're going to move towards a break, and then we got somebody that really knows something about NIL more than the three of us put together, I can yes. tell you. Uh, we'll have uh, Taylor Jacobs from the LSU Athletic Department office. She'll be up next, but first, go ahead, Coach. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112. Or go to our website at www.doyleelectricinc.com. We would also like to tell you about Bayou Apparel. They've been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand, whether you have an established brand or it's a new business. They can help you create a brand in an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. They do logos, event t-shirts, promotional items, all of that for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to the website buyouapparel.com. was looking for the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me, looking to buy a car? Until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. A burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too. Sammy's better than ever. If you're in a, an accident, a car accident, a slip and fall, where you're injured, you need to call an attorney. The defendant insurance company, it's their goal to close the case as quickly as possible and pay out the least amount of money as possible. That's why it's important to call an attorney and uh, call the law office of O.C. Brown. At the law office of O.C. Brown, we're a family-owned firm. We want to be your law firm for a lifetime. Can you truly love something unconditionally? It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. Sammy's better than ever. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. And visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart.
We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano, and we got a very special guest now, Taylor Jacobs, the assistant AD at LSU in charge of NIL and strategic initiatives. Skip and Dan will take it away with Taylor. Thank you for being here. Let me go first, then. Uh, I was there. T- Taylor's right on it. Uh, we have 500 people. Roughly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, roughly, you know. Yeah. And she started... Uh, about NIL. Nobody knew what it was, really. It was still very, very very difficult to get this out. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, we mentioned earlier on the show, the NIL wasn't known by the coaches. It wasn't known by the players. (laughs) And there were no rules to speak of. And you got it under control. Tell me how you did that. (laughs) Um, well, you know, I like to think I have it under control. So (laughs) I just, you know, I think LSU did a really good job at the beginning of being prepared. So we had a group of people prior to the law passing in 2021, a committee of sorts with coaches and administrators and TAF and sports properties, any group that we thought might be impacted by NIL. And we began working on things that, you know, education, ways that we could be prepared, what we thought might come. Um, So we were prepared in that sense. And then I think for go time, the event that you were speaking of when we were educating everyone, we just got up there and said, don't be afraid of it. You know, we've learned about it. It's time for everyone else to learn about it. Actually, how many at that time, how many people worked in your department on NIL? I think you're looking at her department when we started. Am I correct? <laughs> my department when we started? was you. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't even my department. I was technically still in compliance. So right. I was in the oh, compliance right. department. Right. I mean, um, it's become so big is what I'm trying to point out. That, <laughs> I mean, what do you have, eight or nine people now? No, it's actually still just two. Oh. It's me and one more. But I do have a group of students who help us a lot oh, with a lot of the graphics can, and the education. Can. So they're, when, they're great. When taught the rules... Uh, of compliance, uh, of uh, licensing at LSU, uh, there are many coaches, like Jay Johnson's on your board, and he didn't even know about some of his players, uh, you know, getting the NIL, or he didn't know what they had, Mm -hmm. but they went through you. Mm-hmm. and maybe the guy's father or agent or somebody to make it work. Uh, is that, that true? A lot of people, they don't have to go through the coach to do this. They don't have to go through the coach. And some coaches, they want to know what their players are doing, and some don't. So I have weekly meetings with some coaches, and some are like, just update me when you feel like I need to be updated. But they don't have to go through the coaches. Uh, yeah. Dan? Yeah, Taylor, uh Kind of bring the folks through. If you're a business person out there or you want someone to, or you want to find out and be involved in NIL, tell them the, the process involved. Because, of course, we got, um, is it Altheus? Altheus. Altheus mm-hmm. involved yes. a, in a partnership. And then also, everyone that gets involved has to go through the NIL department mm-hmm. and the compliance, and they have to get agents. Tell the folks out there, if they don't get there tomorrow night for your seminar, what the business person has to do in order to get involved with NIL. Yeah, so I mean, there's a few a few things you can do. If you know a student athlete or you know someone who knows a student athlete, you can go directly to the student athlete. Our, we've educated our student athletes heavily. They, m- nine times out of 10, will probably shoot me a text and let me know that a business has contacted them because they want to make sure they're doing it right. But you can go directly to a student athlete. We've launched our new NILSU website. It's lgsports.net slash NILSU. We have a pitch a deal form on that website now where a business can go complete that form. They can request a specific student athlete, a group of student athletes, male, female, whatever they want, and indicate what the job would be and what the NIL deal would be. And then we can help make that connection now. So that's one of the changes with the new state law. What does Altheus do as far as what is their job in this uh, procedure? Right. So we signed with Altius prior to the law, the law passing in 2021 as our education consultant. So we work with Altius from an educational standpoint. Education is a huge piece of what this is because we have to educate everyone involved. Um, so we have our educational partnership, but then we've recently expanded our partnership even further to now include this general manager program. And basically what Altius is doing is they are housing employees 
on campuses. They've partnered with six schools for this GM program, us being one of them. And those individuals are going to help more in-depthly facilitate deals for our athletes. Now so they're going to put them together, athletes with businesses, mm -hmm, and make sure they're mm -hmm. correct? Right, exactly. And for us, I'm the GM at LSU since I was already here. Not every school had someone like me that was living it day in and day out. Um, but I have right now one, and then soon we'll have a second Altius person that are reporting to me, but then they also report to Altius. So that's going to be a great resource to help you mm -hmm. As you grow your department and you train your students and everything else. Skip, you got a question here? I do. Um, we mentioned earlier, Dan did and I did, that we assume, uh, we think we're right, that LSU, Athletic Department, is at the forefront of NIL. Now, I'm not saying that means we get the most money. I mean, I don't know. But it means that we're regimented, we're outlined, uh, we're within whatever rules and compliance. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the fact, I know this is tough, that LSU is at the forefront? I mean, I think it's just, I mean, you can attribute that to the senior staff at LSU, and they really – from the very beginning, before the laws passed, we were able to all come together and they said, we want to make this a priority. We know it's coming. We want to figure out how to work with it. It's changed. We need to be adaptable. We need to learn this new landscape. And that's exactly what we did. I mean, they put someone like me in a position to fully embrace it, take it on, learn what our student athletes needed and didn't need. And that's what I've done. So I, I like to think we're at the forefront and I'm proud to say everything that we've done I think I can confidently say that we are providing services and resources to our student athletes. Can you tell us a little bit, you talked about education, the forefront. Mm -hmm. I've been, of course, at some meetings where you've talked. Tell us about what you do to educate the students with this NIL as far as taxes, having an agent, how do they get paid? What are the things they have to do? It's almost like an economics 101 course. It is. It's a lot. So last year was definitely a lot of NIL 101. What is it? Taxable income. Are you completing deliverables? You know, we were making sure they understood what it is. So this next year is going to be a lot more in-depth education. We've taken the financial literacy to a deeper level. We've been meeting with coaches over the previous weeks to figure out what it is their teams need because all of the teams are different and they all need something different. So do you need, does your team need to understand how to open a checking account and how to write a check? And that's where we need to start. Or are you ready to dive right into investments and taxes and, you know, setting up retirement and all of that. So each team and each coach selected a different program for what they thought their student athletes would need. So some teams were doing it monthly. We'll, we'll come 30 minutes before our practice and we'll meet with the team monthly. Some are doing every other month and then some are going to do once a semester right now. But then additionally, on top of all of that, the taxes piece is crucial. So we do a lot on social media because it's easier for the student athletes. We have We Are NILSU on Twitter and Instagram. So I can go live on Instagram with our financial literacy partner and talk in depth about taxes and they can go back and reference it. That's great. I want to ask you just so that people really understand. We're not going to mention anybody, uh, but I want to play the fan role now. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this scenario, oh, by the way, factually, this thing was set up by, I think, Tommy Tuberville, who's a, a senator in Washington, who coached, was a great coach. Mm -hmm. I think people have been to him, you know, we can't have the coaches making six or eight million dollars and the kids not being paid. I think it came from that. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt. And they put it in for football and basketball primarily. But there are ladies in their sports that do very, very well. We actually, some of our highest NIL athletes are females at LSU. That's right. And uh, I want to explain some of the situations uh, to the fans. Uh, a football quarterback, not, I'm not saying our football quarterback, but a football quarterback can make a million dollars, okay, uh, legally. <laughs> okay. Legally. Uh, and uh, maybe a substitute left tackle may not make anything. 
On the other hand, they may do all the offensive line at some school or all the basketball players because there's only 14 or 15 women. Um, it, it, it's easy. Is it who's, besides the quarterback being a star, which is pretty obvious to all of us, uh, why does that girl get so much money when nobody knows who she is, whatever girl, you, whatever girls you're talking about? So we have, we have several student athletes who have large social media followings. And I think why NIL has become such the thing that it is, it, I think it can be attributed to social media on oh, a lot of accounts. And influencer marketing is a huge thing right now. And brands and companies have been utilizing influencers sure. on social media for that marketing promotion. And so now student athletes who had these platforms, these big platforms on social media, who previously were never able to profit off of their no. NIL, can do the same thing that all of those influencers can on social media. And we have female student athletes who have massive Instagram, Twitter, TikTok followings. And so it might not even be related to sport. It's just more related me, to the fact we, that they have a high social media following. Well, that, that means that one of those people that you're talking about, they could send out, uh, whether it's uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, in their following, the information that says, use this perfume. Mm-hmm say, in their statement, uh -huh. and just blast it out. On the other hand, the football player, he could be required, now I'm asking you this, mm -hmm. the football player can be required to come to, say, an automobile agency once or twice a year, but of course he can't come in a football uniform, right? Depending on who he's going to see, yes. If it's a partner, he might potentially be able might to do it. Might be able uniform. to do it if it's a partner, like mm -hmm. Dan said. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what the people really need to know. Yeah, they really don't have a feel for it. And this show, we're not sports writers, you know, we're coaches. I want to get the information out there mm -hmm. to the people. Naturally, we're not mentioning any names or specifics like that. But I want some generalities to get out to the folks. Dan, how are we doing that? Well, we're doing that. We're getting it out. We try to educate the people here. And, of course, you've done a great job. Tomorrow night, folks, if you've got a business, you have an interest, yep. Taylor's got it at the South there Stadium you go. Club. Help. At what time? Uh, doors open at 6 p.m. Doors open at 6. They'll have some food. Yep, food. Always good to have food. You get a lot of people when you have food. <laughs> there will and, be food. Uh, but I tell you what, it's, it's a great educational thing if you're interested, if you have a small business, anything, because these athletes, the one thing is they're required to do the work because there's a contract, and if they don't, mm -hmm. there's a penalty involved. Am I correct? Correct. That's one of now, the NCAA guidelines. One thing I wanted to say, though, Coach, and I want to ask uh, Taylor, Kim Mulkey made a hire with Jennifer Roberts mm -hmm. to be the NIL person for women's yeah. basketball. Uh. We're talking about us being in the forefront right. at LSU. She's the first one in the country, am I correct? She was. Mm -hmm. She was. Has other, have other schools followed? Uh, they're probably close to it because we've got And other calls. sports soon will follow uh, at LSU. Other coaches will decide this is important because with all the things you have as a coach, Skip, mm -hmm. it's hard to keep track of everything. Just like you have a coach that does uh -huh. recruiting, you have to have a coach that does NIL. Well, How is that going with Jennifer and what does she do? So it's been really great. Um, similar to a way to kind of describe how they set it up is she's kind of the NIL liaison. So Jennifer comes to me and we work very closely on anything that her team is doing or anything that I've gotten for her team, I bring to her and she kind of takes it to the team. Um, so similar to how you would have a compliance liaison or an academics liaison, now the coaches are all saying, okay, we want to designate one person to take control of NIL. Because like I was saying earlier, some of the head coaches want nothing to do with it. Some of them are yes. heavily involved. So they're saying, okay, you're the recruiting coordinator. You're going to be the NIL liaison. You know, they're, they're designating that person. And then I know who I reach out to on their staff, and that helps keep the communication. You know, I think uh, Kim Mulkey, Dan, she's uh, not, not a good coach. She's, not, she's a one of a kind or five of a kind. <laughs> five people have ever done what she's done in the history of women's basketball. So she's super elite. Okay, she can coach the team by herself and nobody has to be there. 
Okay, and that's why she can do something like that. Other coaches uh, need their assistance much more, and that's not a knock on anybody. Remember, Kim Mulkey's in a class by herself. Uh, I, I love this uh, NIL because it's uh, unknown. One coach said to me, they've given us the right to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, that's not true. But what he means is, you know, now he can go out and get the money for a particular player. What bothers me is, is, it, is this possible? Could you envision this? Uh, coach Kelly, football coach, Hall of Famer, as we said, gets on the phone to some guy who's a transfer portal guy. And he says, we really want you to be here, and we're ready for you. And the guy says, well, School X has offered me you know, 50000 What can you do? Do you think that's, I'm not saying that happened. What I'm saying, do you think that's a possibility with any coach as we go forward, something like that? I would probably say they've all been put in that position by now. You hear that, Dan? Yeah. TK. It's not yeah. supposed to be. No, it's but not supposed been to been be. Put in well, that and thanks for being honest. <laughs> that. It's just like in the world of recruiting of all sports. Things have always gone on that probably shouldn't have went on, but they did. Taylor, another part of your uh, title, strategic initiatives, is that what you've kind of been talking about, the different th ways you're laying out the NIL and the communications with those people and the Altius GM people on campus, or is that something else? Uh, it's a lot of things. So some, you know, we're trying to be particular in the software that we're using with NIL. We're trying to, the website and strategic and how we're coming, bringing the businesses together and how we're pairing them. So that was kind of like the added, my all of the few things I do in addition to NIL, that's a strategic initiative. So two, two more questions for you. One, do you have enough hours in the day? I do not. I don't <laughs> no. sleep anymore. <laughs> I kind of thought that. The busiest person at LSU, uh, because it's all sports, it's every athlete. There's got to be almost 500 a uh, different, mm -hmm. you know, athletes in all the sports at LSU. And everybody's handling it a different way. You know, uh, some people, coaches, mm -hmm. some people want a big pool of money that they can give out to certain players as they go. Mm -hmm. Other coaches want everybody to be the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, other coaches want to take the, let the star player do his thing. And um, it's so different. It's so new. I don't envy your position. I do appreciate and applaud everything that you've done uh, at LSU. And uh, God knows, I hope that, uh, you know, it continues in the same fashion. It's honorable. It's equitable. It's there for everybody, and the rules can be set by uh, this young lady and a couple others in your department where the coaches need that. Yep. One other thing, Taylor, before we let you go, G give everybody the ele elevator pitch, a little bit about you, where you're from, where you went to school, oh, thank you. sports that you played, because I know you played sports. And then the big question is, how and why did you end up at LSU? Okay, so I'm from Dallas, Texas originally. Born and raised, played tennis my entire life. Um, I actually went to school at Auburn. I shouldn't say, I don't like to say that out loud here. But I went to school at Auburn where I played tennis. Um, met my husband there. He was a baseball player at Auburn. And he moved here first for a job. And then I followed soon after we got married. And I started volunteering in the athletic department. I worked in the athletic department at Auburn. So then when I came here, I started volunteering here at LSU because I knew a bunch of people in the department. And then... A position in compliance opened up, and I've been here ever since. What's your husband do, the former baseball player? He works for Marucci. At Marucci. Mm -hmm. Let's get it out there, folks. There you That's go. right. <laughs> See, baseball, it's still, it's everywhere. Yeah. There's it's a lot of baseball. <laughs> in the community. The ball Taylor, player thanks, thing. Thanks so much for coming yeah, and taking for time. Me. She's also got a little boy. She got the yep, two husband years had old. to cover. Yes, he ha he's covering tonight. So he's, we're... We're on coverage. Well, thank you for taking time out from your family. We, we after do appreciate it. We've got, we got a big night tomorrow, folks. Don't forget, tomorrow night, your business owner 
Get out to the South Stadium Club, 6 o'clock. Go doors open. Taylor's going to educate you some more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At Baker Gulf Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Success in our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at bakergci.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. I want to tell you about a great business. You got to hear it is the name of this business. I got a guy. We all got a guy. I got a guy. White Glove Service. They can handle your monthly maintenance around your business or your home with their professional team members. Ask them how to get set up and what plans they have. One call for most trades. I got a guy. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us as our skills are brought across many trades. Our talented team members can handle most jobs across multiple trades. In a single visit, they do have hourly rates available as well, depending on what you need. Email info at igotaguyservice.com or check them out, I Got a Guy, 985-662-0025. Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. He was looking for the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me, looking to buy a car? Until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. Whoever says size doesn't matter must have never had an oversized Sammy's salad. Sammy's better than ever. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barbershop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Roosters, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Rope with Skip and Cano. I'm TK, the host here. We appreciate everybody chiming in on YouTube. A lot of fun. We're on the Colada Show YouTube channel tonight. Going forward, follow the YouTube channel, Hold the Rope Show. Hold the Rope Show. Also, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's all there. That's where we'll be next week when we got Jay Johnson and Mike Scarborough in studio. Our next guest, speaking of baseball, guys, and I got a guy. You know, I got a guy. I got a guy. Coach. We got the, the one and only Ronnie Rance. Uh, I would intro you, but you got too many titles. Well, uh, I mean, let me let me say this about Rance. He, um, you're not supposed to have a lot of favorites uh, if you're the coach, but he's of course one of my favorites. Yeah, he was a national championship pitcher, but it's more than that. Uh, he's grown on to be great in Baton Rouge. He is the executive director and president of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. But wait. There's, There's more. more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy is able to uh, run, to work with ch- kids and run some kids through baseball and find time to do that. And uh, 
But wait. <laughs> <laughs> he did something. I want to ask you about this. Uh, he put his own money up to buy a summer league team that's going to have college baseball players. But it's right here in Baton Rouge. It's called the Rougarou, Baton Rouge Rougarou. Tell us about how it went for you in the first year at the Rougarou. Well, we're fundraising right now to build a dome on top of uh, Pete Goldsby Field, Coach, so that gives you an idea. Seven rainouts and 25 home games. So, Can you uh, get turf to start? Oh, I'll yeah. tell you, we're going to work on that. By the way, I'm, I'm selling uh, world's finest chocolate to make up for uh, the loss at the gate this summer. Anybody wants to buy a candy bar, i got a box in my truck. But anyway... Donuts um, for breakfast. Right. Try that one. Yeah, Krispy Kreme by the dozen. That's right. But um, no, it was it was it was interesting, Coach. You know, I it, you know the people don't realize the Texas Collegiate League is one of twenty plus leagues around the country that 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 has summer college baseball. Uh, obviously, the most famous being the Cape Cod and the Alaska League, been around the longest. But the TCL is a very good league, and quite honestly, the leagues are all pretty similar. You know, the gone are the days of the real good yes. pitchers going to pitch yeah. in the summer league. You know, yeah. so it used to be back when I played, or even 20 years ago, uh, you know, you'd go to the Cape Cod and, and you'd see, you know, Auburn's one, two, and three. Now you see Auburn's six, seven, and eight, you know. Yes. And so, honestly, the TCL league and the Cape Cod pitching is not very different. It's pretty similar. So um, those leagues are a little overrated. But, uh, or as you used to say, when LSU would play Miami in the – 80s see they're a facade see they got miami across so i think that of the tcl i think the other leagues are a facade they're overrated we're just as good and uh the the acadiana cane cutters have been around for 12 years yeah. in lafayette they were they just won the championship this year for the very first time uh and then now the baton rouge rougarou are here and uh, we just finished our first year tommy was a big part of that uh, on the broadcast and stuff and I think it's going to be great. I think we're we're made a lot of progress. We had 600 people at our last game of the year, which in summer ball is a big number. And uh, we had a good crowd. All uh, half our games were on the How radio. How many players do you need over the course of the summer? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, to make a team. So there's 30 players on the roster this summer. We had 46 players. Right on our team to get us through two months of baseball. Now, that sounds like a high number, and it is, but we were the lowest in the league <laughs> as fun. far as players. I mean, most teams have 55, 58 players. What do guys play for two weeks, and then yeah. they got they leave, or a pitcher throws enough innings, and the coach says, shut it down. and Or a guy says, yeah, I'm going to be there all summer, <laughs> and then he oh. doesn't. <laughs> then he leaves after a month because he wants to go to the beach with his girlfriend. Uh, of course. You know, so, let me, i got to ask you this, though. You're talking about being at the beach with your girlfriend? Tell us about your Miami trip where you saw oh, Louis Garcia. What happened there? We got a phone call. Yeah. We saw you. So so Louis Garcia, uh, who, of course, uh, played for you and was a teammate of mine and all that, was on the 91 National Championship team. So here's the interesting thing about Lou. He's got a very successful restaurant, Garcia's Seafood. He and his brother own in Miami. Great place. But it's amazing. You know, his dad was a fisherman, came over from Cuba in the early 60s. His brother is like Jacques Cousteau. You know, he's such a he's he's an underwater diver and he does everything. Yeah. But Lou is allergic to shellfish and he's afraid of the seawater. So how does he get into having a boat yeah, a and boat. and yeah. being and selling seafood? It's unbelievable. So he took he convinced me. This is how good of friends we were. He convinced me to go with him in the Keys for about a forty minute boat ride to a place called Alligator Alley. Yeah. Uh, where well, there's yeah, a, going out west. Where there's a famous uh, lighthouse there, and you can go just jump in the water, and there's the coral reefs and everything. He didn't get in the water once, Coach, <laughs> at all. He got me in the water and then proceeded to film me the whole time I was in the water, called you, called Cano. Uh, <laughs> As as there's jellyfish around, he didn't he didn't tell me about the jellyfish, you know. As they're floating by me, he didn't know they were there because he couldn't cook them. Right. So it was it was a great outside of getting stuck on a sandbar on day two because he ran us aground. I was almost like Gilligan. I almost got stuck for a month. But outside of that and the jellyfish, I had a great trip. A I'll, great tell, trip. I'll tell you what, uh, Louis Garcia and uh, Roddy are dear friends. <laughs> he rip and rag on each other, but they're dear friends. One of the great things for a coach like me to see some of the others 
like Louie and what he does and his success. Yeah. And for you and your success and working with kids to boot, uh, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of Louie and I'm proud of Doug Thompson, yeah. for example, yeah. who got his children and went to your last game. That's right. That's right. He came just wanted games. to support his buddy. Well, let me let me clarify that, Coach. Uh, he didn't actually buy a ticket. I was going to uh, say, ah, Dave, I, I know Thompson. Free tickets. So, it wasn't paid so for. Listen, listen. You know, as much as I enjoy a lot of my former <laughs> teammates coming to games, uh, you know, it's 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 not really a really right. benefit, <laughs> right? Actually, like you know, you got to give them a free beer and you got to give them a burger. It's like, all right, guys, you need to buy a hat. Yeah, you know, hey, buy a t-shirt. Hey, Roddy, Roddy. welcome <laughs> to skipping my world <laughs> yeah. because you guys were lifetime scholarship. Lifetime scholarship. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, now I know uh, how you uh, feel. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> Come hey, to coach, Ruguru coach, again. I need an extra hat. Tell me a story about the guy who wanted an extra hat. Oh, um, so well, listen, I thought of you because I had a player who's playing for Will Davis at Lamar, by the way. I won't say the kid's name. I did tell Will the story. Check your laughed. roster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I can narrow that down. So, so, so he comes to me, that, I had a player, he'd been with us about three weeks, and he says, uh, Mr. Ronnie, uh, before a game, he says, Mr. Ronnie, you mind if I get a, uh, can I get a hat, a home, home game hat? Because we had a home hat and a road hat. He said, can I get a home hat? And I said, well, what happened? You, you, left, you lost your hat? You left your hat at home or something? He goes, no, no, no. He says, mine's dirty. <laughs> and I said, what? And he showed me the hat. And the back of the hat, it, you know, it was dirty. It looked like and that. I was like, uh, you, oh, wait, wait. So you want me to give you a $35 hat? Yes. You know, that's what you I mean. Like, oh, so, so you turned into Skip. Right, right. You totally. <laughs> that, that's literally what I, I said. So you want me to give you out of my pocket Use a $35 voice. hat? You know, I said, or, you know, I said, and I even said, when I played at LSU, yeah. you know, I said, I got one hat per year, and that was it. For life. No road, <laughs> no way. No home or way. No home. Or practice. No. It was just one hat. one hat. Purple. And, and, one and color. Uh, yeah. I said, you can just wash it, you know. Or I said, I'll sell you a hat. Let me know what you think. He walked off. He didn't buy a hat. <laughs> but he hey, did coach, buy. you didn't realize you trained him for more than baseball. That's right. Yeah, I did. That's right. And uh, he, 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 he jumped into it. He was part, you know, in, in 1990 and 89, you know, he was part of uh, painting and, you know. It's in the book. Oh, no. It's in the book. Can I, can I book. say this? Because I supervised. I'm going to give you a story. He was assigned to paint. Oh. He wasn't really part of painting. I'm gonna. He'd find I'm, a way to not be part. I of did painting. pick up the pebbles in the silver bucket though. When <laughs> no, we put I'll the, tell you when what. When we put the uh, drainage system in the outfield, you know, after you the, know, the French drain. He the French was the drain. first guy that got me. <laughs> One of the things the kids had to do, unlike today, you know, uh, we had to get the baseballs. You know, we had to put them back. You know, to see that we had enough for batting practice. Yeah, count them after practice. And yeah. Counted them. So every player knew that he was going to have to have baseballs. And, of course, Roddy always came back with a baseball or two. It was only later that I looked in his locker and he had six baseballs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the guy was always creative. Coach, hold it. We have Ronnie. We could talk about a lot of things. Oh, absolutely. Okay, but tell him the story of how Jumbo – Became Jumbo for the fans. Uh, they need this oh, yeah. uh, it, well, A nickname at the time at school. Uh, he comes in and, uh, oh, Ronnie, what was your weight? I was the, about, I was probably about 6'5", 260 my, right. in my freshman that, that, year. You know, that's generally. 40 two, size pants. Yeah. He needs a 40. <laughs> okay. We go through, you know, we didn't have many stats, shoes. You know, we don't have a 40. And Mike comes Except up. one. Well, we had one pair, but we didn't have two. And he comes up to me, <laughs> my, the manager, Mike Bonio. No. And he says. Band Aid. Band Aid. Band Aid. Yeah, Band Aid. Band -Aid. Oh, that's right. Band Aid said, Hey, coach, we need your pants for Ronnie Ritz. Like, I'm the only guy in the field that can fit, you know, makes me look so bad. <laughs> you know, and I thought I was dieting and doing a job. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> well, anyway, I give him my pants, of course. For practice. And, yeah. uh, but you don't know who he is because he's a I don't even know who him. he is. And, of course, I got, you know, sweatpants on and I go out because I got no pants. 
And I go look at him, and he's stretching a little bit with the rest of the guys. And I looked at him, and I said, Jumbo. Yes. That was it. Yeah. For three or four, five, yeah. six years. So he said to me, uh, hey, uh, how are those uh, Jumbo pants working out for you? <laughs> Feel good? Everything good? You stretching? Good? Feeling good? All right, Jumbo. And because Coach was going around trying to remember – you know, yeah, all right, this is, uh, you know, Antonini, I'm going to call him A-bomb, whatever, yeah, right? Really? Got to come up with a nickname for everybody. And so he's like, hey, uh, new guy, Rance, how's those uh, pants working out for you? And then Jumbo got shrunk to Jum. You know, hey, uh, <laughs> Jum, come here. You know, that was a that was a famous one, you know. But, uh, yeah, so the, but, but, but I appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, but what I, I'll tell you what, what I love about Ronnie, folks, is, you know, as soon as he finished uh, school, I mean, you know, he went to work. You know, as soon as he finished baseball, professional baseball, he went to work. <laughs> like everybody else. But in his case, he had new things. Like he was going to take people on a bus That's right. to Alabama because yeah. things were hopping yeah. after yeah, 90, 94, 95, 96. Right. Right. You know, things were starting to hop. So Ronnie figures I can make Jumbo money. Tours. And he called it Jumbo, Jumbo tours. tours. Yeah, yeah. And he takes a he takes a guy, well, he takes a group, a full bus, to Alabama, and he's feeling 1997, great. Coach. Pardon? 1997. Y'all needed to win one game. We needed to one win game. The SEC and that was the series. Doug Thompson game. Yeah. Doug Thompson. Right. <laughs> he takes him up there, and, of course, everybody's in the stands rooting, and it's a big game until finally one guy clutches his chest. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for laughing. And he goes down. And EMS is called. And Ronnie is thinking, <laughs> of course, that goes as my insurance. Yeah, didn't sued. Have that. Didn't have that. I'm never working yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I said, every he go to the guy and he blow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he could do. Beat on his chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But here's the here's the thing. So we, we we you know, we I rented a bus. And the funny things about a coach is that, like, I didn't have, like, the Dixieland charter. So, I didn't have Hotard. I found a place in North Baton Rouge. I found a place in North Baton Rouge where, you know, you had to go down the alley. And they, you know, behind the tin building, like, yeah, there's a bus back here. We'll rent it to you. It's like, does it start? You know, yeah, all right. I mean, it was the old school. It had the hump. You know, it had, like, the little viewing deck up at the top. So, anyway, we, we, I, I fill the bus. We go over there. And it's the twenty-seven to two game. Oh, first game we lost twenty-seven. Yeah, the the, the, Doug the Thompson game, game. the Thompson game, twenty-seven to two game, <laughs> and it's Africa hot. I mean, it's miserable. It's a oh, thousand degrees, hot. and I have a guy that uh, heat stroke. He you passes, got a guy hat passes <laughs> out, <laughs> and EMS is there, and I'm thinking. Every little bit of money I've got, I'm, I'm gone. Every, you know, my, you know, good, I mean, I didn't have anything back then, so it wasn't like they were going to take anything. But I'm like, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm going to get sued. This guy's going to die. You know, I'm going to lose everything. And f here's the best part. The guy, he just got a little overhydrated. They took him to the uh, hospital. He got an IV. Back the next oh. day in the stands, watching the go. game, pulling for the Tigers. I got to say this. Clinching though. the SEC championship. I got to say this. You went on after that. You had Jumbo Tours. Jumbo Sports, Sports. Network. Right. I got to say, you were the original NIL brand guy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You built yeah. your own brand. That pitch brought to you by, that home run brought yeah, to you that's by, right. that, that's right. that pitching change. It was a Clico pitching change. <laughs> Wait, here's the best. Here's the best. This is the best. This is the best. So, Dan Canterbury is in charge of camp at LSU, yes. the Skip Bertman baseball camp. And Skip, uh, it, I'm pro probably the only guy that Skip actually paid money because y'all bought. A, a, a Skip Bertman baseball camp package. Wasn't yes, a lot of money, did. but it was a little money. And the deal was this. Every time that there was a pitching change in the game for LSU or the other team, we'd run a commercial for the Skip Bertman baseball camp. Am I lying that there were times that you went to the mound just to get a commercial run? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Exactly. I knew it. He didn't want to go because it was too far to walk. One. So I had to right, go. Right. He goes, go out there. We need some campers. And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. It was, the phones would ring, you know, in uh, Streetport when we hey, were in the commercial. that's my boy, Ron. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> that's beautiful. I hadn't heard the one. Yeah. Go to the mound. We right. need campers. <laughs> that's right. Especially in the last year, you know, like yeah. this is it. This is it. It's <laughs> the last. This it's, is the finale. Yeah, it's the last dance. That's right, it was that's right. to go get as many campers as you can. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, 
Ronnie, we're proud of you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Tell them a little bit about, we did all some funny stuff, but this serious business about the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, which I'm proud to say I'm a member. Yep. And every, and of course, I went up there, Ronnie, when Les Smiles was right. inducted. And Peyton Manning was And there. Peyton Manning. 2019. Yeah. Happened. And Roger Cater. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. You went. Roger mm -hmm. was there. So we went up. And uh, you ran it. It's just wonderful. I mean, the large bank. Only you could have done that. See? And uh, it is in Natchitoches, which is a beautiful place. I mean, there's no question about it. But it's not like a large enough city. Yeah, 30,000 people in Nagasaki. Yeah, you got to work with it. And, mm -hmm. and congratulations to you. He's always thinking about it. He's always working at it. I'm proud of people who can do that. Well, we, we thank you, Coach. And, and, you know, we got Lloyd over here pushing the buttons. And, you know, uh, you know Lloyd, a lot of sweat. Uh, <laughs> Lloyd get, donated uh, a lot of time. He was an intern with the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. So that's how Just he got to his punch start. my ticket. That's how he <laughs> got to start. Lloyd's been an intern for me <laughs> twice on sports shorts over the years and with the Louisiana uh, Sports, uh, right. Sports Hall of Fame. And with the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. He's been an intern for 11 oh, years. I, love, I like hanging out with people that have more hair than me. Yeah. That's kind of why, that's why I go and keep Lloyd around. <laughs> but but uh, this actually, coming up august 28th uh, up in alexandria we're going to select this year uh, the 2023 louisiana sports hall of fame class so you'll probably be the public will get an announcement probably sometime the second week of september but uh eli manning's going to go on the ballot this year i have a feeling he might get in yeah i guess <laughs> like a, uh but maybe uh, arch will get in oh no he's not on the ballot <laughs> <laughs> but we had we have a hundred and 50 people yeah. that are legitimate nominations. I mean, wow. I'm talking about just anybody, you know, I'm talking about like 150 people that have a legitimate that, argument. That, that's a credit to what you know, you've done. Yeah. That's well, it's a credit to the state of Louisiana. It for really is. Some great well, problems. we really do is. have great athletes in the state of Louisiana. Yeah. There's no question about 2024, it. 2024, Drew Brees will go on the ballot. Right, really? Come also, on. Um, uh, uh, Simone Augustus will be oh, on that's that right. ballot. She's, yeah, she's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, no so, I mean, you know. Sylvia Foles eventually. So, I'm, I'm lobbying for Paul Bird. Um, you know, Paul Bird's been getting – he got some traction last year in the voting. Yeah. And, you know, as far as, like, baseball players in the state of Louisiana go, Paul Bird, B.J. Ryan at UL Lafayette. Right. Both of those guys, I feel like their time's going to come here soon in the next yeah. couple of years. So, I, and as far as LSU goes, you know, there's a lot of great players that have played at LSU – um, and obviously, we know in the future the Aaron Hills and the and the Alex Bregmans and the Nolas and all their right. their times will come down the road. But it's kind of like who, who you know who gets in from that next crop of LSU players. And right. and I think Paul is probably the most deserving. Well, he, he's a guy who played twelve years in the big leagues and announces in the big leagues. Right. I mean, no question. All star, former all star. Well, what I say, what I'm saying is, there's a lot of competition. Right. For this, a lot of good people, like you say. Available and I remember high school people, right? Uh, you know, coaches that have won forty. Well, Glenn Chakini is a, is a guy that's nominated, going to be Barb. nominated. Barb, yeah, Barb coach, High School. Oh, coach. sure. You know, uh, M. L. Woodruff is a guy. Who yeah, actually like M. L. Nom you you know, nominated. Um, Paul Maneri's going on the ballot. Yeah. He's on the ballot. So, you know, it's it, it's Louisiana. You know, it's funny when I when I got the job, uh, I, I beat out the guy who was running the Kansas Hall of Fame. They that brought him in and. They were considering uh, him for the position. And when he came on his interview, you know, he was blown away at the talent and the people in the Hall of Fame. Imagine being the guy who runs the Kansas Hall of How tough it is, wow. right? You know, Fred Johnson is in, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they don't have the great names and the players and the talent that Louisiana has. And that's that it makes my job super easy. And it makes it, but it makes it hard Pick, yeah, you know, pick being a part of that 40 person committee yeah. on who picks them because there's so many great deserving athletes yeah. and coaches. Ronnie, before we let you get out of here, and I'm going to blindside you a little bit, but we need a skip story in the skip voice. You got 7,000 of them, <laughs> so you got to pull one out and uh, something right. maybe that hadn't been told. Because look, this show's all about fun and stories, right, coach? All right. Lloyd, get ready for this. Get ready for this one. Uh, Ronnie, I want you to tell uh, one of the stories. Which one are you going to well, go with? Coach, here, here's the thing. <laughs> I feel, like the, statu the, I feel like the statute of limitations is up. 
Um, you know, I was watching in this studio on, on Mikey Matuk's show, Sean Ochinko sold, told some Paul Maneri stories. I don't know if you saw the clips or whatever. And they were really funny, and they were like never before heard, yeah. you know, type stories. That's but, right. You know, nowadays where, you know, I, I, think, I think it's time that we tell the legendary story that, you know, that is my favorite of all time. Okay. <laughs> and I want, I want. I, I, breaking you know, news, ladies and, and gentlemen. And I want, and breaking I want you, news. I want you to be here to be able to respond to it. Because, look, in this day and age, we're a lot more relaxed than we used to be. So the story goes like this. Coach Bertman and, and uh, so my freshman year, Dan Canterbury screwed up. And he didn't get us a bus when we were in Kentucky. And we had yeah, we, to, we couldn't get a bus. Well, well, right. We couldn't get a bus, so we had to take the Lincoln Town Cars. Town Cars. And we had eight Lincoln. I don't, you can't go to a, a rental car place <laughs> nowadays and get eight Lincoln. They don't even exist. Like, how do you get eight? That was amazing. And we, and we had to drive from Cincinnati. So we drove, yeah, we, we flew, yeah, yeah, because back then, that's what LSU did. You know, you went to Cincinnati, not Lexington, saved money, you know. Yeah, and course. we literally stayed at a La Quinta, which is Spanish for next to Denny's. And we literally <laughs> stayed at a La Quinta, like, which Paul Maneri would never, I mean, nobody, Jay would never stay at a La Quinta. <laughs> Jay Johnson would quit before he stayed at a La Quinta. And he stayed at a La Quinta. I, I, will say, I don't think Jay cares where he well, stays. Well, Paul would have quit, that, for that, sure. Paul would have quit. quit. But we, not only, we stayed at a La Quinta Twice that year, we stayed in New Orleans and Metairie, right at the La Quinta oh, yeah. and veterans, Metairie, and veterans. veterans for the for the Win Dixie Showdown, right. and we stayed at a La Quinta in Lexington. Now the Baton Rouge Rougarou don't stay at a La Quinta, <laughs> Coach. Just want you to know that it's okay. So anyway, I, so we stayed at La Quinta. So that day, that weekend, it was freshman on the bags, freshman on the bags. So coach, so Coach Bertman, I was assigned to Coach Bertman's bags. And so I'm riding in the, 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 the Lincoln with Beetle Bailey's driving, Skip's in the passenger seat, and I'm in the back. And we get to the La Quinta. We change into our sweats. It's on a Friday. We used to play a doubleheader Saturday, a nine and a seven and a single game Sunday. And we go to practice. And, well, we practice lasted 30 minutes because it was freezing cold. The rain's coming. It's, it's 25 awful. degrees. It's miserable. I mean, it was awful. It was 25 degrees. And so we literally the rain's coming, and we're all just sprinting for the car. You know, for the Lincoln, that was back when Coach could run a little bit. He's actually jogging <laughs> for the for the for the car because we got you know the rain's coming down. It's twenty five degrees, so we get in our car. There's no cell phone, GPS. Coach had the phone in the bag thing back then, and so we get lost going back to the hotel. So Coach Bertman says, I mean they're arguing. You know, he's he's yelling at Beetle. Beetle's yelling back <laughs> at Skip. Meanwhile, I'm in the back seat like. Thinking to myself, if we just take a left right here at the street, we could be there. But I mean, I'm not going to say anything because I'm a freshman, right? I'm just just sitting there listening to these two guys get on each other. So finally, Coach, who of course has us have a Tampa, says, uh, you know, no, hot boxed me the whole time, didn't put the window down. He says, uh, hey, uh, pull over to this Cracker Barrel restaurant. We'll get something to eat. We'll figure it out. So we we go over to the restaurant. And Coach Bertman and I are sitting at the table, and uh, uh, Beetle goes to the payphone. You know, he's calling his wife, he's calling recruits, he's figuring out how to get to the hotel, whatever he's doing. And he leaves me with Coach. And I know now that Coach Bertman's sitting across from me thinking, what the hell am I going to talk to this guy about? <laughs> I've got an 18-year-old kid sitting across from me, and there's nobody else here at the table. So what am I going to talk to this guy about? So he starts with, uh, and he's got to have a Tampa and a crown and water. And I know he's going to deny that, <laughs> but he did. You Cracker know Barrel, I mean? like, Crown This was 1991 Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel Lexington, Kentucky. I, I, don't, I don't think it was legal then, but somehow it happened. <laughs> and so he says, uh, Rance, uh, how's school going? Good? Everything going good? Going to class? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, go, go on a class. Study hall. Lying for your teeth <laughs> at that Absolutely. moment in time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, study hall, good. Going to study hall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great, great. Good great, thing he didn't good. ask you where it was. Man. Hey, uh, <laughs> you're not drinking too much, partying or anything like that. Oh, no, no, coach. You know, nothing good happens after midnight. You know that, right? <laughs> yes, sir, coach. I'm mean, great, 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 great. You're not doing drugs, are you? You're not doing any of those, the marijuana, are you? No, 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 sir, coach. Not doing the drugs, not doing the marijuana. Yeah, because the marijuana, see, it's bad for you. It's bad for you. It messes with your brain cells and uh, kills your brain cells. 
He says, because I know that. Because when I used to teach health class at Miami Beach High, I used to teach the kids in the 60s during the marijuana phase. And the kids would tell me, you know, coach, you need to try the marijuana. And I said, no, it's bad for you. Not going to do that. And, uh, but I had a friend, had a, had a coach friend who did the marijuana. And he said to me, Stanley, if you ever want to try it, just let me know because I think it would be good for you to teach the class if you knew what it did. And so finally, about halfway through the semester, I told the guys, you know what, give, give, it, give it a try. And so um, I uh, told Sandy Bear, I had to go to a VFW <laughs> function or something. And instead, I drove across town to my guy's house, knocked on the door. He looks through the peephole. Is anybody following you? Like, what are you talking about? Nobody's following me. We come inside. There's a scantily clad woman. He shoes her to go get the stash. And he comes back, and he's going to explain to me about the marijuana. So he opens up the box, and he says, oh, we got the Haitian black. We got the Dominican gold. We got the Cuban green. And he says, which one do you want to try? And I went with the Haitian black. <laughs> And we rolled it up and we smoked it. And after about 45 minutes, you know, I turned to him and said, look, it's not doing anything. This is uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I've tried it. The marijuana is not doing anything for me. And so I left and uh, went home. And he said, hey, Stanley, I'm sorry. You know, the first time for everybody's a little different. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. So uh, I'm on the interstate. I'm driving on the, uh, the I-95 uh, going back home. And all of a sudden, I notice cars are whizzing by me <laughs> on the interstate. And I look down, and I'm going five miles an hour. <laughs> and so I get home and uh, park, uh, park the car, and I go to bed. And the next morning, Sandy Bear wakes me up earlier than normal and says, Stanley, Stanley, get up. And I'm like, what? What's the matter? I said, did something happen? And she said, well, you tell me. You know, the car, it's parked on the lawn. <laughs> so, Jumbo, don't do the drugs. <laughs> it's bad for you. The marijuana, don't do it. You and, think I don't know. And, right? uh, and I said, yes, sir. And, I mean, listen, Nancy Reagan and Skip Burton, just say no. <laughs> you know, I never did it. Never did it. You know, so thank you for that, Coach. Uh oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ronnie, we appreciate it. Everything always. We'll probably get you back on right before the Rougarou next year. By the way, I, I, I yeah. bought a book and had it expedited to my house. So, uh, and it's well worth it, man. It's yeah, awesome. We, we, Congratulations, Coach. Am I right? Lifetime scholarship recipient. He's got a sign. Oh, no, no. I've got a few books for him to sign. <laughs> but, 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 Coach, it's a great book. I know you've been working on it for years and years, and uh, so you should be proud. Of it. Thanks. All right, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and put a wrap on this uh, Season 5, Episode 1 of – Hold the rope with Skip and Cano. We're back to put a wrap on it right after this pause. Love something unconditionally. It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. Sammy's better than ever. He was looking for the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me, looking to buy a car? Until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. A burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too. Sammy's better than ever. If you're in a, an accident, a car accident, a slip and fall, or you're injured, you need to call an attorney. The defendant insurance company, it's their goal to close the case as quickly as possible and pay out the least amount of money as possible. That's why it's important to call an attorney and uh, call the law office of O.C. Brown. At the law office of O.C. Brown, we're a family-owned firm. We want to be your law firm for a lifetime. Can you truly love something unconditionally? It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. Sammy's better than... 
Cato. We're going to put a wrap on things here tonight. Dan Canterbury, Ryan Rance are still here, Coach Bergman and myself. Hey, next week, okay, we're going to be on the Hold the Rope Show YouTube channel. So make that switch. Appreciate it. Everybody jumping on the Collada Show channel tonight uh, to help us get launched. We appreciate Jordy Collada, Lloyd, Jack, all the people here at FM Digital Media that have helped us out so much. We appreciate it. And the comments have been through the roof on YouTube and Facebook. We'll do a better job of getting to those next week. But spread the word. It's going to be every Tuesday at 6 o'clock. YouTube channel next week at Hold the Rope Show. And if you connect with Hold the Rope on all the social media platforms, you won't miss anything. We'll have all that info for you. And next week on the show, we'll have Jay Johnson, LSU baseball coach. I think we'll talk some baseball that night. Also, Mike Scarborough of TigerBait.com. He's been at LSU practice. He's on the front end of LSU recruiting, both the short term and the long term. Coach Berber, one thing I got to say, you said when we started this show, actually before the tape roll, you said, we want to have some fun, tell some stories. Yeah. I think we did that, Coach. Yes, I think it's about fun. I don't think uh, any of these shows are going to, you know, educate. Now, we do have some great information, but you can't do better than Ronnie Rance. And we can do that week after week, and I hope people will tune in. Any closing comments, Dan? Well, I want to thank everybody that watched the show, and hopefully the, we'll grow the audience. But uh, thanks to Jordy Collada and his whole staff, and, of course, Lloyd doing a great job. Uh, we're excited to be on, uh, on YouTube and hope this grows. And please patronize all the sponsors that you see on this program, the TV commercials, the live reads. We, we, you know, patronize those folks who they are who, what makes Hold the Rope show happen. So, Joe, tell them people you saw the show, you saw that commercial. That'll help as well. On behalf of Dan Canterbury, Ronnie Rance, Skip Bergman, all you folks listening, we appreciate you very much. Lloyd pushing all the buttons tonight. You have been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching the Hold the Rope show presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet. Please like, share, and comment on this post. Get this moving on YouTube. We'll talk to you next week.